Hi, welcome to my latest video. Today, I'm gonna to show you a very quick video how to renew the front brake pads on a Land Rover Freelander 2. The brake pads that I'll be fitting are Mintex ones. These actually come with uh, shims to fit behind the pads. Some brake pads come with a special surface here. Others you have to put some copper grease behind here to stop them squealing. Never ever put copper grease on this side or on the discs. It's on the back of the, pa the pads to, to stop them squealing. But I'm not going to be using any copper grease this time because uh, we've got these little shim things which clip onto the back of the pads. So first thing to do, jack up the car, support it on axle stands, remove the wheel, undo the, the, uh, the wheel nuts, uh, loosen the wheel nuts first a little bit to then jack up, remove the nuts, remove the wheel, put the wheel under the side of the car for safety and then we'll look at getting the old pads out. Okay, so wheels removed, jacked up, axle stand, and now we're going to remove the old brake pads. So what we need to do to remove this spring the easiest way to do that is to push it forward, push it that way, push it that way, and then these bits have a little kind of hook, and that they just sort of pop out of that those two holes. So the spring kind of comes out. Around the back, there's this, and there's another one at the book underneath, down there. What you need to do here is get a flat blade screwdriver, just pop off a little plastic cap. There's the plastic cap, try not to lose it. And inside there, inside there, is a seven millimeter Allen head bolt. And that is this bolt here. You just about see it there. That goes through there, and it's the guide pin that the whole floating caliper moves back and forth on. So you need to undo undo that and undo the other one at the bottom. And then it's a good idea just to Put the screwdriver in and lever, just try and lever the caliper a little bit to allow the caliper to then be pulled off. Okay, I'm going to undo those seven millimeter Allen head bolts now and then we'll see if we can get that caliper off. The easiest way to remove these is just to get a flat blade screwdriver, carefully push like that. Okay, so you need to push them that way and that way and outwards. There it is. Keep that safe. Now what I'm going to do here is get round the back with 7mm Allen key. I put it on a ratchet here because these bolts can be fairly tight. They're not meant to be that tight. Uh, some people uh, do them up way tight thinking oh, it breaks, but I do them up really tight. Um, also worth mentioning it's 7mm. It's a rare Allen key size. It's not that common. That was tight. I don't know who's done that up. Way too tight. Um, it's a rare size, so most Allen key sets have you know, three, four, five, six, eight, ten. They miss out seven. So you can buy a special seven millimeter sort of long L-shaped Allen key in Halfords, etc. But um, luckily I've got a seven millimeter Allen head socket in there, which I've got in the set. So we'll undo that, or we'll also find the one lower down. Put that in there. Oh, blimey. It's 
done this up to. Way tight. Oh, God. Mm. Yeah, just be, be prepared for them to be tight. If a garage gets hold of them, they're going to crank them right up. Don't need to be that tight at all. Right, so I'll loosen those fully off and then we'll we'll just prise the caliper free and lift that out. Okay, so I've undone these as much as they will go. The, the bolt, you can see it there, it's only threaded right at the end, so you'll undo and then they'll reach a point where it doesn't undo anymore. So what you need to do is just carefully just push that back in. Same underneath. And that should start to free up. If it doesn't come off easily due to a lip on the edge of the disc, just, just push, lever the pads very gently away from the disc. And you should pull that free. There you go. I recommend tying the caliper up securely. Don't, whatever you do, let it dangle on the brake hose here. I'm just gonna rest mine there for now. What I should be doing is tying a piece of wire or a piece of string up around here to uh, support the weight of that. I'll do that in one moment. Let's just rest it there for a minute. Pull out this old pad here. As you can see, that's a little bit of life left in it. About three millimeters of pad there. I've already done the other side and the other side only had about one millimeter of pad left. So it's worse than this side. These pads were EBC green stuff pads, which were very good. They lasted a very long time, probably about 60,000 miles I got out of these. Um, only complaint was the brake dust. Really, really bad, thick black brake dust all over the wheels. So bad, in fact, that I actually ended up uh, switching to black wheels and fed up with cleaning the silver ones. So um, there's that one. There's the other one in there. Now, the one that goes into the piston, usually has kind of clips on the back. It's worth mentioning as well, these EBCs have a, a kind of rubber backing. They don't have shims. You can put a bit of copper grease if you want, but they have a rubber back on them. Didn't stop the, uh, the passenger side squealing though, towards the end of its life. So a bit of copper grease if you're fitting EBCs. The Mintex pads, as I mentioned, have, have shims with them. So I'm not gonna use any grease, we'll see how they go. I have heard reports that Mintex pads can squeal quite a lot. Hopefully the shims will be all right. If not, I'll have to put a bit of grease in as well. Right, let's get this caliper hooked up and then we can look at putting the new pads in. Okay, so I've tied the caliper up just to support it there. Take the weight off the brake hoses. What I'm going to do now is use a G-clamp to carefully push that piston. In order to fit the new pads in, that piston has got to be pushed right down, right to the end, as hard as well, as far as it'll go, so you don't tighten it too hard. As soon as it stops moving, that's that's it. Um, when you do that, it is important to keep an eye on the brake fluid level because that can overflow that's already I've already pushed that back with the g-clamp a little bit and the fluids come up fairly high so I'll need to uh, get a syringe or something and suck some of that out otherwise it'll overflow okay Be useful to have a syringe like this and draw some of that fluid out. Right, don't think we need to put that back in, so I'll dispose of that. I might need to take a bit more out as I compress this further. So I'm going to put the G-clamp on there. Let's try and do that. Just 
slowly wind that, compress that, pushing that piston back down. Keeping an eye on the fluid level. That's okay. Slowly, slowly wind that back down. A little bit fiddly. That's fully down. Check the fluid level again, then we can put the new pads in. Okay, that's fully down now. It's worth mentioning here that uh, on the front calipers on the Freelander 2, you can just push these pistons down. I think you can on the back as well, but some cars, Volvos in particular, Fords, etc., you have to turn the piston as you push it down. It's, it's the ones that have the handbrake, the hydraulic handbrake built in. You can't just push it back with the G-clamp, it has to be rotated. Not the case on the front of the Freelander 2, and I don't think it's the case on the rear either. Um, worth checking on the rear when you do that. But definitely for the front, you can just G-clamp that, push that back in. You can buy a proper caliper piston rewind tool from, from Halfords and other motor factors. That sort of sits in here have a kind of special plate that it pushes back pushes that back down in a large g clamp will will do in this case okay there's one of the new pads there for this shim a little tiny locating lug there and hopefully you can see that the light is fading a bit there's one there that has the clips on it with the shim at the back and that's in there. I'm now going to try to locate this in. There we go. Before you put that in there, make sure these pins are fully back, otherwise the threaded part will catch. Once that's in, re-tighten these, refit the plastic caps, and refit the spring. That's it, and then the wheel can go back on. Right, that's it, all back together now. Spring there, slide pins done up, plastic caps refitted, new pads in, brake fluid at the correct level. I'm going to refit the wheel now, and we'll go for a drive. First couple of miles, you have to be a bit careful because uh, new pads need to bed in. So I'll just take it for a test drive and just gently break to uh, bed in the pads. Okay, that's it. All done. Done the other side as well. It's getting very dark now. Hopefully you can see this. Lower down off the jack. Retighten. Made sure I've retightened the wheel nuts after lowering it down as well. Put them on finger tight, then lower it and then tighten them up properly. And now it's time to go out for a quick test drive. Right, I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.